Rule number one on the Banza. Roll up any loose sleeves, tie back long hair, tuck in necklaces and hoodie strings, especially if you're a person that has earbuds out. One, we can't have earbuds in class, but make sure all that stuff's tucked into your shirt so that as we lean over, it doesn't get trapped in the blade. And that goes for all of the equipment in here, not just the bandsaw. Number two, never have your hand or any part of your body in the line of cut. We want to make an imaginary line that goes from the start of the blade and cuts this table in half. And I want to keep my left hand on the left side and my right hand on the right side. I don't want to be crossing because that's when we have the danger of running into the blade with our hand. Number three, keep hands at least three inches away from the blade at all times. There is a red throat plate in here that covers about an inch. We want to make a two inch bigger wide circle than that around the blade that we don't want to get our hands uh, tied up in. Number four is one of the most important, is keep this adjustable guide within a half inch of the material that you're cutting. Now we have several different varieties of bandsaws here. This is a 14 inch bandsaw. You know that it's a 14 inch bandsaw because the space from the edge to the blade is 14 inches. Most common type of bandsaw that you'll see out there. But they all have, no matter if it's the really big one that we have back there or the smaller ones in the construction lab, we all have a, a knot or a nut here that can get loosened. We want there to be about a half inch of space between this and my board. And this is important because one, it's safety. It's a guard so my hand doesn't get in there, but it also helps keep the blade stabilized so that I'm not having cuts that wander a lot on the bandsaw. Number five, the bandsaws in the woodworking shop are for wood only. So on the safety test, you're gonna see bandsaws are for wood only, and I want you to say, yes, that's true, they are. But in our mind, we're knowing that there are bandsaws for several other things. In the construction lab, you're gonna find a metal cutting bandsaw. Different blade, and it spins significantly slower. If you go to a butcher shop, you're gonna find a bandsaw that's meant for cutting steaks up. So there are bandsaws meant to cut up lots of different materials, but we want you to be careful. In the wood shop, only cut wood. If you've got other things that need to be cut, that's great. Let's have a conversation about it before you just assume that you can start cutting it. Number six, stand on the left side of the bandsaw when operating it. So I'm gonna call this the left side. I really don't want you standing here. So if we're calling this the right side, then that makes this the left side. But this is the place we don't wanna be because I have seen these blades break before and come out this way at somebody who was standing here. Now luckily, it never hit the person, but we wanna be careful about where we're standing in case that blade does break. And if we're standing here and the blade breaks, we're gonna be well away from any danger. Number seven, don't cut sharp curves when using the bandsaw. And I know that we talked about this in middle school, but if I wanted to cut out this circle, I would use these relief cuts. And I'll demonstrate those for you here in a minute. But these relief cuts are just short cuts that come in and relieve the pressure on the blade. Even though we're cutting curves and irregular shapes with the bandsaw, we have a straight blade that's doing it. So we're putting quite a bit of pressure on that blade when we're trying to cut these curves. So these relief cuts come in, they almost touch the line, but they don't quite touch the line. That way when we're making our cuts, every time the blade gets to one of these relief cuts, it release, relieves the pressure on the blade. It allows that blade to straighten out so we're not putting undue stress and breaking a blade because that happens quite often when we try to cut curves that are too sharp. Number nine, if anything looks unusual or the blade is out of adjustment, get the instructor. Sometimes you'll use this and it'll start shaking a lot back and forth. A lot of times that means that there's a piece of rubber missing on the, one of the wheels or that the blade is bent. There could be lots of different issues that come up. Again, like some of the other machines we've talked about, your ears are gonna be a really good teller that something's not right. So if it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't look right, if it's dancing all over like a washing machine that's out of balance, let me know. Number 10, don't feed stock into the bandsaw too quickly. If we're pushing in too hard, we're putting too much stress on the blade. And if our hand slips off, we're likely to hit that blade. Bandsaw blade spins at about 2000 RPMs which means that even if you just barely touch that with your finger, you're probably gonna need stitches. So we wanna keep our hands away and we're not pushing really hard. If we've gotta push really hard on a wood cutting bandsaw, it means that the blade is dull and we need to get a new blade. Number 11, don't talk to people while you're using the bandsaw. We want your focus and your attention to be on what you're cutting, not what your friends are doing next to you. Number 12, if you need to back out of a cut, turn off, the power 
to the machine first. So let's say I'm cutting out an S, and about halfway through the S, I realize this is wrong, I need to stop. You've gotta turn the power off before you back it out. Otherwise, this will work like the derailleur on your bike, and it's gonna put pressure on the back side of the blade, and that's gonna pull it right off of those wheels. So you'll see when you open up a bandsaw, you've got these wheels, and if I put pressure on the back of the blade, it's just gonna pull it right off the machine. The reason it doesn't do that when we're putting pressure on the front side of the blade is that there's a stop back here that prevents it from going back too far, but there's nothing preventing it from coming your direction. The only exception to that is these relief cuts. Because they are short and straight, we don't put the pressure on the back side of the blade. But on a safety test, you're gonna see, true or false, you can back out of a cut while the blade is moving, and you'll wanna say false. We don't back out of cuts with the blade still running. If the blade is dull, see the instructor to get a new one. A dull blade is dangerous to use. And 14 is when we see the most injuries on the bandsaw. Never attempt to remove a scrap piece of wood near the blade while the blade is still running. So the blade is running. Let's say I've made a bunch of little relief cuts. There's a bunch of little pieces here. Don't reach in and try to grab them. Your eyes will play tricks on you. When things are moving very quickly in a bright light, you lose depth perception. That's the reason when you look at cars with bright shiny rims on a sunny day, it looks like they're spinning backwards. Your eyes can get fooled into thinking you've got more space or that that blade's not running. So never get those little pieces out of the way. Use a push stick. It could be a scrap piece of wood to knock those pieces out. Please don't use your hands. And 15, the teeth on a bandsaw blade should point down. If the teeth are angled up, when you try to make your cut, you'll realize it, it, you're just making burn marks. You're not actually cutting anything on the, on the piece of wood. Uh, it's because the blade isn't backwards. So let's make a couple cuts. Uh, this bandsaw, all of our bandsaws have an emergency stop and they have a little bit different sizes to them. And I believe this one is actually getting a new uh, start stop button anyhow. But there is a start stop switch here that if I push this in, I can't turn it on. That overrides any power switch at all. In order for this machine to turn on, I would have to twist that so it's popped out. Now we'll be able to turn the blade on. So let's make a couple of relief. You can see those relief cuts are small and they go right up to the line. On a bandsaw, we never want to cut the line. We always cut about a sixteenth of an inch away from the line. That way we know where to sand. Now to start cutting this, I would cut in at an angle. And now the nice thing with the relief cuts is a series of really small cuts. I don't have to try to do the whole circle or oval at one pass. And when I'm done, I turn the blade off. Thank you.